What a night, huh? Just absolutely chaotic and eventful. But, um, it was a very insane night, but uh, it's, it's pretty much intense because the picture became just a little bit clearer. Day six was pretty eventful. It started with Vancouver blanking the um, Minnesota Wild in game three, and uh, Quinn Hughes, the, uh, the Calder finalist, one of them, had three points, all assists, two on the power play. En route to that victory. So Vancouver's one away, one win away for advancing. The round robin commenced on uh, the second, the second half of the uh, the second half of part two of that round robin took place. Uh, Philly defeated Washington three to one in the East game. In the West game, Vegas beat beat St. Louis six four. Oh, St. Louis. You know, first, well, St. Louis, like Boston in their round robin, they're out of the number one chase. They can't get number one. The highest, the best they can do is number three. And that's going to be up for grabs on Sunday. But it, it's it's it, it's amazing. It's strange how the Blues will operate this round robin. In the first game against the Avalanche, the defense was there, but the offense wasn't. Only, only that one goal. Um... In, 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 in the game against Vegas, the offense was there, but the defense wasn't. And the goals the goals were being scored, but they still weren't shooting. That was the one constant. They really weren't shooting the puck. I think they had fewer shots tonight than they did Sunday against Colorado. And uh, it's, I don't know what's going on. Is is the cup, is, has the cup hangover finally hit St. Louis now? Because it didn't hit them all season, even with Tarasenko out for pretty much all of it, uh, but it looks like the cup hangover could find could finally be hitting St. Louis at the worst possible time. So, um, as far as the West round robin, like I said the St. Louis Blues, the best they can do is third, and it's going to be the Avalanche versus the Knights on Saturday for number one. Winner gets it. Now, more qualifying round action. Ugh. Oh, Toronto, 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 Toronto. Oh, Toronto. I said don't blow this. And what do they do? They blew it. 3 nothing, losing overtime. All it took for Columbus was a goalie change. And for Toro to basically tell Pierre Luc Dubois, Hey, you suck. And what happens? Nothing gets past Elvis. Right here. Thank you very much. Her. And um, Dubois was on fire. A hat trick, including the OT winner. So, 3 nothing becomes 4-3, and Toronto is one loss away from the lottery. You know what team joined the lottery after tonight? Winnipeg, because they gave up. Now, I, I can't believe Winnipeg lost like this, because I've always thought the Jets... In the last three seasons, they've had a, quite a bit of a deep team. Yeah, Shifley and Line A have been out, but they're more than those two players. They got a lot of good players, but they just fizzled out. They gave up two goals in the last two games, outscored 10-2 to two between games uh, three and four. So, Winnipeg is out. They joined the Rangers in the lottery. And just think about this for a second. The lotter, the set, phase two of the lottery, which will decide who gets number one, that could be full of teams who are already loaded. Uh, how you ask? Well, here's what's in store for tomorrow. It's six games, all elimination games. First off, at noon Eastern, nine a.m. Pacific, it's the Islanders and Florida. The Islanders up two games to one, and Florida avoided the brooms. By winning game three, but can they can they force game five? That's the question. At two thirty Eastern, eleven a.m. Pacific, it's Nashville, Arizona. Arizona's up two to one, and that's that's the thing. Nashville, even with the deals they made, they're still kind of top heavy, and they're one loss away from the lottery. Hmm. 
Let that sink in. But wait, it gets better. At 4 Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, it's Game 4, Pittsburgh, Montreal, the Habs. The 12th seeded Habs up two games to one. Which means Pittsburgh is one loss away from the lottery. Pittsburgh. I have to do like uh, that movie 42, Pittsburgh. The team with Crosby, Malkin, and Gensel, and who won two cups in the in the latter half of the 2010s, won back-to-back -back cups very recently. A team that has been top heavy for the better part of the last like five, six years, they could get the they could be in the lottery and could get number one. You talk about the rich getting richer, that could be it. <laughs> Later on, beginning at 6.45 Eastern, 3.45 p.m. Pacific, Game 4, Blackhawks, Oilers. Blackhawks are up two games to one. Now, here's the thing. These are two, both of these teams are kind of top-heavy, and each one has at least one superstar. Uh, Chicago has the kane Taze duo that won three cups in the 2010s, while Edmonton has uh, the next budding young superstar, Connor McDavid, and a heart finalist in Leon Dreisaitl, as well as really a pair of pretty good goalies in Mike Smith and Miko Koskinen. They're one loss away from the lottery. Yeah. And then, at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, Game 4, Maple Leafs, Blue Jackets. The Jackets, with their overtime win, they're up 2-1. to one. Now, Toronto... Toronto is the city. The city is the New York of Canada, very large city. And Toronto, even with their faults, they're pretty top heavy. Matthews, Marner, Muzzin, Kapanen, uh, a good goal in Freddie in Freddie Anderson. They're one loss away from the lottery. Yeah, and that and number one, that number one pick could turn them into something resembling a powerhouse. So, <laughs> ugh. And finally, at 10.45 Eastern, 7.45 Pacific, it's uh, Vancouver, Minnesota, Game 4. The Canucks are up 2-1. Uh, to one. Now, neither of these two teams are really top-heavy. They have their players, but they're not like, they're not a Pittsburgh, they're not a Toronto, they're not a Nashville. They're not an Edmonton. Vancouver's up and coming, but they're in the driver's seat. They can advance. They've got good. They have. They have a good young core. So they don't really be. They got a good young core. They got a good young core, but they're not like established. So number one could really help them, but they're up two to one. Minnesota kind of needs that pick. This is a very interesting qualifying round, isn't it? Yeah, six elimination games, but I I tend to think I tend to think that I'm gonna say at least two of them should go to max. There's no way all six. There's no way all six of these games end with someone eliminated. There's no way. I would think that at least two of these teams that are behind and face elimination. I would think they can force game five because if if all these teams, if Florida, Nashville, Pittsburgh, Edmonton, Toronto, and Minnesota, if they all get eliminated tomorrow, that's going to create a very light hockey weekend. Because it's going to be two games each the rest of the way on Saturday and Sunday. And they're both going to be round-robin games. We need some game fives in this thing. So let's hope let's hope two of these teams, maybe three, hopefully, stick around for at least one more game. So let's have that go. Let's not have it all end tomorrow. Let's make it. Let's let's make day seven pretty eventful. As eventful as eventful as tonight's day six was, and that's my recap of day six. It was a crazy, crazy night. Overtime choke jobs and one another head is lopped off. So um, that's that. That's my review of day six. I'll be back tomorrow night to recap. Uh, recap day seven once again. Congratulations to the Calgary Frames, the first West team to advance for the qualifying round. The only other team that advanced was the Carolina um, Hurricanes. But neither team at the moment knows their opponent. That'll be sorted out. 
That'll be sorted out on Saturday and Sunday with the end of the round robin. So again, congratulations to Calgary. And I'll be back tomorrow to recap day seven.